Speaker Jots, I, I texted him, just asked him about that exchange last night, and he said, did you see CBS? And I said, no, so I put on Face the Nation. He says they edited his video. He says he'll never agree to it again. Wow, just he like said they edited, He says they edited, he goes, on, on Face the Nation, uh, it was even more uh, direct, but they edited it out. He goes, I did the interview to make, they made me, they made Kamo look better. They edited wow. my video to try to make me look less effective. I will never agree to a non-live wow. interview with CBS again. <laughs> Like I've been saying all year, expect the media to go full Orwellian nightmare untethered by what has been before this election is over. And just wow, have they proven me and the other far right conspiracy theorists right once again. And I brought the receipts, so let's get into it. He goes, I did the interview to make, they made me, they made Kamo look better. They edited wow. my video to try to make me look less effective. I will never agree to a non-live wow. interview with CBS again. Journalistic it's out of control. So that's a different accounting than this 2% you say was distributed. Yeah, so they've obligated some funds, but they've only distributed 2%. The rescue and recovery effort's still going on, and then we address the rest of it. So that's a different accounting than this 2% you say was distributed. Yeah, so they've obligated some funds, but they've only distributed 2%. And when I was there on the ground, and you should go, I mean, bring the cameras and talk to the people there. They'll tell you, don't, don't take politicians' words for this or the administration's word. Talk to the people there on the ground. They had not been provided the resources almost two weeks out from the storm that they desperately needed. And when I was there, 13 days post, uh, you know, post the storm hitting that state, People are still being rescued. They're stuck in the higher elevations in the mountains because the roads are down and all the rest. So they need every every uh, available resource and all hands on deck. The rescue and recovery effort still going on, and then we address the rest of it. It is utterly maddening to watch this. When a Republican is in charge and we have a disaster like this, the Democrats and the media unite to attack that Republican as uniquely evil for supposedly not doing enough and actually dividing the country along racial lines over it. How is this happening in, in the United States? And the other refrain was, had this been Nantucket, had this been Boston, Cleveland, Chicago, right. Miami, Los Angeles, how many choppers would have been? Plus, did government neglect turn a natural disaster into a human catastrophe? And was it rooted in racism? George Bush doesn't care about black people. But when a Democrat is in charge, especially a black Indian boss lady who they desperately want to win the election, they just lie and deceive America to cover up government ineptitude. Especially when the victims of that ineptitude are mostly white Republican Trump supporters. Or as the Democrats and their media call them, domestic terrorist threats. They've even gone as far as to cover up FEMA failures by making government the real victim in all of this. Even making up completely false stories about right-wing Trump militias hunting down FEMA members, which of course they say is the real reason FEMA's failing at their job. But of course, a couple days after the drive-by media got their propaganda use out of the fake story, we find out that it's just one guy who made threats and is definitely not working with the feds. Moving on, we see that CBS News also edited a portion of their interview with Mike Johnson when he was talking about the fact that Governor Glenn Youngkin in Virginia has been trying to clean up the voter rolls because it's filled with non-citizens. And of of course, the Biden-Harris DOJ has targeted him and stopped him from doing that because Democrats want non-citizens to vote. You Glenn know Duncan that is, it is the against the, the law for non-citizens to vote in federal elections. That's established law. Of course it is. Of course it is. But of course it is. But here's the problem. There's a number of states that are not requiring proof of citizenship when illegals or non-citizens register to vote. We know that's happening. But respectfully, um, we Speaker, want, you everybody should want the law to be followed. You Lynn know Duncan that is, it is the against the, the law Virginia. for non-citizens to vote in federal elections. That's established of law. Of course it is. Of course it is. But of course it is. But here's the problem. There's a number of states that are not requiring proof of citizenship when illegals or non-citizens register to vote. We know that's happening. Look, Glenn Youngkin in Virginia, I was going to say, he issued an executive order to clean up the voting rules uh, heading into the election. Less than 30 days out, a couple of days ago, the Obama, I mean, the Biden administration, Department of Justice, the Biden-Harris administration, sued the governor and the state, the Commonwealth of Virginia to try to prevent them from cleaning up their voter rolls. See, that kind of thing creates a lot of doubt and concern in the minds of a lot of the American people. Why would they do that? Um, we want, everybody should want the law to be followed. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, wait just a minute. It's not me undermining it. It's the actions of the Biden-Harris administration in some of these states. Non-citizens are not allowed to vote under federal law. So if your issue is with certain governors, shouldn't you be talking to them? Wait a minute. 
wait, wait just a minute. It's not me undermining it. It's the actions of the Biden-Harris administration in some of these states. Non-citizens are not allowed to vote under federal law, but the states have prohibited. We passed the SAVE Act, you know, in the House. The SAVE Act says you've got to have proof of citizenship before you register to vote. And Chuck Schumer and the Democrats blocked that in the Senate. We could have prevented this. The questions that people have about that, but the Democrats chose not to. They opened the border wide. A lot of people theorized that that was so that they could have non-citizens to vote. These are realities, Margaret. I wish it weren't true, but that's what's that's the concern that people have. And, and, you know, in Wisconsin, for example, some of the counties are... It is law, but we... The, that's correct, but we have to make sure the law is followed, and that is the whole point. That has always been the whole point of the SAVE Act and all the measures that we've tried to ensure. I believe, by my count, we have about 16 million illegal aliens in the country since uh, Mayorkas and Harris and Biden opened the border wide. And because of that, there's concern because those people are distributed all around the country, as you know. There's concern some of those people will try to participate in the elections. Look, some of our House races, I believe the Republicans are going to win the House, grow the House majority, win the Senate and the White House. But in some of our House races, I mean, I have a colleague who was elected by six votes uh, in 2020. With some of these are decided by hundreds or a few thousands of votes. So if you have non-citizens participating against the law, and you have no mechanism in some states to stop it, that is the, the root of so much of the concern. And of course, you know, in California, they have ballot harvesting, right? Ballot harvesting is notorious for uh, opening the door for fraud. In Wisconsin, they're gonna put, in some counties, uh, unmanned ballot boxes in public parks again. Now, that really pisses me off to no end. It is straight up election interference when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's DOJ sue Virginia to keep non-citizens on the voter rolls and CBS News, a supposed check on power, is actively deceiving the American people to keep from them that Democrats voted against the SAVE Act. Traitors. Surprise, surprise, they're all just lying to your face. Let me be very clear with all of you. This election, if you want to call it that, is very important, but not for the reason our Orwellian state propagandists gaslight the country with. The truth is, and I think you all agree, they are the actual threat they accuse their opposition of being. When the guardrails become an organ and weapon of the government, and they have no problem whatsoever deceiving and harming the American public, then they have become a domestic enemy. It's pretty clear to me that our systems have been captured and weaponized by the Democrats and so-called deep state. And if they win this election, they're gonna see it as a mandate to push further and to remove the remaining guardrails, such as the Electoral College, the filibuster, and the Supreme Court. At that point, they will have abolished the Republic and replaced it with a pure democracy where they will never lose power and their opponents will no longer have a voice. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments, and if you're still here, might as well hit that like button and subscribe. I do post regularly, so keep checking back for more. And if you follow me on X, I post much more frequently every single day. You can find the link for that in the description description and pin comment. Hope to see you there.